cataractcoach.com. Retained cortex leads to trouble, causing macular edema and decreased vision. So this is a case that's sent in by an anonymous surgeon. And it's the end of the case. Good capsorexis has been done, and now the cortex is being removed very carefully. Now the question is, can you leave some cortex in the eye at the end of the case? Well, the best is to clean out as much as possible. Remember that the lens proteins, the crystallins, haven't been seen by the immune system, and so they're going to cause a very strong inflammatory response. And any little bit of cortex that's left behind, also keep in mind that it tends to hydrate and swell up in the post-op period. And even if it's left at the equator of the lens caps or bag, it tends to swell and find itself migrating towards the center of the pupil. So here's removing most of the cortex, but again, there's still some stubborn cortex remaining. Now, the best advice when we do cataract surgery is to clean up all the cortex and really clean up any residual lens epithelial cells that are stuck or adherent to the caps or bag. The cleaner we leave the eye, the less inflammatory response there is. Even then, we still use steroids and NSAIDs in the post-op period to quell any inflammation. So there's that one little triangle of um, cortex that remains. The eye is now filled with viscoelastic, and the surgeon is going to deliver the eye well into the eye. So here comes the lens. I'm delivering this nice and slowly. And this looks like a single piece acrylic lens. And that's with some multifocal rings on it. So this is a lens that's not currently available in the U.S. Now one move you can do here is to rotate the lens and have those haptics uh, stir up and release some of the adhesions of the cortex that's there. So this is a good move right here of trying to rotate the lens and free up any cortex that remains. So if there is a large bit of cortex that's left, again, this can cause a lot of inflammation. And inflammation in the post-op period can predispose the eye to more issues like macular edema. That cystoid macular edema often occurs in the setting of a pre-existing epiretinal membrane, which remember, in some of the most important studies done by Don Gass, we saw that 20% of 70-year-olds have a pre-existing epiretinal membrane. So this is a good move here, removing the lens cortex now that's been released by um, friction from the IOL being revolved in the eye. But there's still some lens cortex there. Do you see it? Directly opposite. Now it becomes more difficult to get this because it's behind the IOL. Here's a case where you may want to go behind the IOL in order to remove that. Here's what it looks like at the end. Just that little bit of cortex, but that's going to be enough to cause a lot of inflammation in the post-op period. If we look at the slit lamp on post-op day three, we see there's the um, uh, cortex that's causing inflammation there. It's causing a big central pasty. You can see as the days progress, the eye's still hot and inflamed. Look at the ciliary flush. A lot of inflammation going on in this eye. The inflammatory cascade will eventually dissolve all of this but it may cause side effects such as posterior segment inflammation. At the beginning, macular OCT shows about 300 microns thickness in the center. Here's at two weeks, as the cortex dissolves away more and the anterior segment becomes quieter, we get more swelling in the macula. So that looks great. Now the visual axis is cleared up quite a bit, but now look at the central macula, 420 microns. You can see the cystoid macular edema that's now developing. And you know, one month out, now it looks much better. The anterior segment looks quite clean. And you think, wow, that'd be great. Patient must be seeing well now, but not so fast. Look at the posterior segment, 750 micron thickness. This is severe CME that's going to take time to resolve. So what's our take home message here? Obviously remove all the cortex as best you can. If there is retained cortex in the post-op period, it may be better to go back in the eye and remove it, aspirate it out of the eye. And if the patient does start to develop macular edema, you need to take some action here. And so in this case, the patient may benefit from a very aggressive treatment here. Anti-inflammatories, topical steroids and NSAIDs, maybe injected steroids, maybe injected anti-VEGF medications, maybe even a macular peel to get that epiretinal membrane off. 
but be very careful next time and try your best not to leave and retain cortex in the eye. Thanks for watching.